Hello folks, as mentioned in my previous video, I've now got a rifle scope from Discovery Opt and uh, I'm going to do a, a small unboxing just to show you what's in the box and how well the packs and how they come. So looking at it straight off, it's quite a big box. So it says on the front, shot proof, waterproof, nitrogen filled, so quite a big scope there. Now this is a first focal plane scope and it is the ED PRS or precision rifle scope it's a 4x20 by 52 side focus illuminated reticle with a 34 millimeter tube it's got like a Christmas tree reticle on it the illumination is just on the cross and the center dot in the middle <clears throat> now what I've found when I've, I've uh, had these scopes before they come really well packaged and they come with lots of information so you've got the discovery op card there and that basically uh, tells you all about the scope might have just said the specifications 4x20 it's the first focal plane which means when you zoom in the, the actual reticle grows as you zoom in and you won't lose uh, your point of impact because because of that so uh, if you're using uh, milder old over you, you keep that same hold over even when you zoom in, you don't lose it like you can do on uh, second focal plane scopes. So it's uh, an MRAD design scope, not a minute of angle scope, but an MRAD. Uh, so it's got a 52 millimeter objective lens. Like I say, the tube's 34 millimeters. Length of the scope alone is 14.8 inches. Weight is 39.3 uh, ounces or 1.15 kilogram. The total adjustment for elevation is 32 MRAD and the windage is 17 MRAD. Click value is 0.1 MRAD. Okay, so cameo uh, cleaning cloth there. You've got a general instruction book on uh, Discovery Optics scopes. And what I do like about these, you open the box up and it's got your full test certificate there. Quality control has been managed really well it's a bit like looking at a, a service record or mot certificate telling you that everything's passed on it and it's not just somebody rubber stamping it you can see we've been handwritten as well so uh yeah it's quite a lot on there so checking for air leaks test equipment pass nox starches and oxidization color pass shim screws inspections pass markings in reticle etching all correct Horizontal impact, no shift. Vertical impact, no shift. Components seated tight, no movement sound. Reticle, no scratches, dots and dust. Fixed lens, no scratches, dots and dust. Ocular lens set, no scratches, dots and dust. Objective, no scratches, dots and dust. So to go right through it, the lens, the uh, refraction adjustment, magnification knob, parallax knob, illumination, adjustment knobs, reticle, uh, magnification knob again, parallax knob, adjustment knobs for eye focus. So thoroughly uh, checked out there. So also in the box, we had the cleaning cloth, but you also get all these uh, like cleaning pens. So the top comes up and that's got a mop on it. Same on the back, you've got a brush on the back and yeah, that's uh, just on the slide like that. So yeah, so really good thing to have. A bit like a pen, keep it in your pocket, clean your scope. Now Irene was my contact from uh, Discovery Optics and she said she'd send me some rings to fit to 11 millimeter dove rail, which I've got. So really nice chunky rings there got uh, six mounting screws on the top there two on the side and they're duff mounts so i was going to fit it to the uh, day state the uh, wolf actually comes with three sunshades so you've got two the same size and one long one so depending on if you're pointing towards the sun you can use any of those or you can use them as a combination as well i mean it look ridiculous if you screwed them all together which you could do because that's the way they're designed so if you look at that when they're all fitted on that's almost as long as the scope itself that's ridiculous but yeah so that's your sunshade combination also comes with a leveling kit to, to mount the scope and i will do that 
on this video i will mount it using these so there's basically some mathematical way of uh, setting it up basically through uh, using angled components so if we take them out of the box you've got two wedges there i suppose that's depend on the height of your rings so you've got two wedges there and then also in the box you've got what the wedges mount to which is that so <clears throat> i mean if works well with picatinny ones but as long as it's flat it'll work off off of that so you put it flat onto your rail and then using your angled bit that goes up and it should in theory basically that'll find the level bit and that you, you put the bottom of your scope on top of that and shove that in and that levels it basically so it's, it will work based on the angles it's all mathematical really so the scope itself then is really chunky big big uh, adjustment rings on up for the elevation and windage side parallaxing wheel it parallaxes down to 20 yards so not a typical ratting scope i mean you can shoot rats at 20 yards plus but uh, for the best focus it'll focus down to 20 yards so it is a precision rifle scope so designed for air guns and firearms basically i mean the turrets are so big uh let's see the size the diameter of the turret Oh, about four and a half centimeters in diameter or well, getting on for two inches basically it is illuminated reticle on this i did put a battery in it so you just turn the outer wheel for your illuminator and the inner wheel which is bigger that's your parallax wheel and that is uh starts off at 20 25 50 100 200 500 then infinity because this is a milrad scope that won't be yards that'll be meters so i said yards it's meters so parallax is uh, from 20 meters so yardage on that's probably about 22 yards comes with a front scope cap on the back you've got a rubber plug that just pulls off like that also in the box you've got the throw lever and basically that screws in to the actual zoom wheel it just makes it a bit more leverage and easier to use uh i release probably about uh, three and a half to four inches so that is a four to 20 times zoom on that. It says you zoom in, the reticle grows. That's not a bad view there. Gets around, uh, say, 14 times. You've got a really good big reticle there, but you can, like I say, if you go all the way in, really does fill the screen. You get down to about uh, nine, uh, nine mils on that when it's fully zoomed in. You can see all the reticle at 14, no problem, from top to bottom. Right, so these are adjustable stop caps on these. You'll zero it in at whatever range, and then just by unscrewing the silver top there, which are really easy. <sighs> I've had all, all the discovery scopes, and they're pretty easy like this as well. So just take the cap off. The turret will then lift off. See where we are at the moment. And then you get an included uh, Allen key. And on the sides, you can loosen off the stop, adjust it, and then put your cap down onto uh, your zero, retighten it up. But yeah, listen to the clicks. Put that back on a minute. But yeah, really uh, chunky scope, chunky turrets. And uh, enjoy using this, I think. Okay, so... So nice, well-defined uh, clicks on there. Same with the side. And it's got uh, holes in it so you can take that cap off and adjust if you want. Reset it. There's a throw lever. Just make it a lot easier to have the throw lever on it. But uh, yeah, very good. Parallax wheel. I'd say that's in meters. And then you've got an on off illuminator. You can twist a bit tight, but cap comes off and then 
Some chair just screws on. There we go. I mean, that's ridiculous. I don't think you'd ever use a, a full length one like that. <laughs> but you, you can have it as long as you like. So. And that's the extra long one. So that's with two on to, to the uh, mediums. I think most people will just get away with a one. So that. It's a Discovery Optics ED PRS 4x20 by 52 side focus and illuminated reticle. I'll set that to uh, 14 times on that. So what, what I will do, I'll try and get you some views through the eyepiece uh, and show you how it looks. Uh, but in the meantime, I will mount it to the uh, rifle and uh, you'll see how, uh, how the actual levelling kit works. But, uh, that's the initial unboxing and we'll install it onto the rifle and then in the next video we'll be out in the field zero in the scoping and just uh, doing a box setup and show you how, uh, how well it works in the field but uh, really nice looking scope I mean on the bottom it's got the quality control pass uh, mark on it and they've all got their own individual serial number so then next up let's mount it to the rifle Okay then, what I've done initially, put the two mounts on, took the top covers off, got them in place, put the top caps on, start tightening them up but not too tight, I needed the scope to be able to move. What I did, look through the eyepiece, get it the right length for eye relief, which is about right there. So what I'll do next, using these, now I would have used it from the other side, but on the day state, electric rifles, we've got the screen there. I think it slightly goes above that, but the good thing is, is that this will fit on this side. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it in, line it up there, try and get it in. So I'm not going to hit that bubble on the bottom. And using the wedge, <clears throat> making sure that don't move. What you do is shove it in, try not to get it too close to the wheel. And that's flat and that's about right there. Shove it in, that's levelled it. So I'm going to slightly tighten it down, but not too tight because I need to get that out. If that is in the right place now, that's pretty easy. It's all about angles, getting the angle right. And it basically aligns the scope with the rail. So unless your rail's off, it should be okay. So altogether there's 12 locking screws on the top to lock it in place so there's plenty there i'm not tightening i'm just i'm just uh, putting them down so they more or less stop and then when they stop i'm going to take the wedge out and tighten them all down that's m normally my m method of doing this anyway i do use a mark one eyeball a lot, i know a lot of people use uh, bubble levels so i hold that and pull that's that that's that so I'm just going to lock the caps down there if you go opposite corners, a bit like doing the block on a car, opposite corners again, and just keep doing that till they're all pretty safe. And then the, uh, the centre ones go opposites. Tell the quality when they've got six mounting screws on each turret on each uh, ring. All right, one. I'm not going to go too tight. Front one's done rear one's done and uh, that's basically it that's spoke lev uh, scope leveling kit complete <sighs> nice <sighs> In the initial recording through the Discovery Optic uh, scope, 
and I'm actually use the NV001 which is a discovery uh, add-on camera for the back of it uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to see this or not but, uh, it's a bird up now trying to uh, oh it's gone that little shit that's better now at four times at the moment so I'll zoom in that's 20 times you can see the uh, I'll focus that a bit better So that's about 100 yards away. Back down to four times. Oh, coming back in. I need parallax it. All the way in is 20, but it's a bit further than that from here. So I think we're about there. That's at four times again. It's a pretty decent image, look. Now it will look bigger through this scope as it's shown through the camera because there's some magnification on the camera. So it's actually more than four times, but it's four times on the scope. I'll go to that's six times. That's more or less filling the reticle up more. That's initial views through the scope. I'll zoom in on that. So if I go all the way in, it's 20. I'll try and parallax it better. You can really see the leaves on that. Cat again, we're all getting glyph, but that's off the camera, not off the scope. Or face look. Try and parallax it better. There we go. Probably about 23, 24 yards to that. And zoom back out. We're all getting glare, but it's down to the camera. Well, there we go. So that's the initial views through the Discovery ED PRS 4x20 by 52 first focal plane scope.